Je voulais savoir pourquoi les gens, les surfeurs, étaient si attirés vers les vagues, vers la mer. Alors, j'ai fait un documentaire où j'ai interviewé des surfeurs des années 50 et 60. Et j'ai choisi ces surfeurs parce qu'ils avaient une longue histoire avec la mer et une passion incroyable. Même ici à Biarritz, j'ai vu des gens complètement changer leur vie juste pour passer quelques secondes sur une vague. Alors, j'ai appris trois choses en faisant ce film. Que la mer est vivante, qu'il y a un point de repos dans les vagues et que toute chose est faite des vagues. Alors, la première chose, je trouve intéressant que la courbe d'une vague c'est une spirale Fibonacci, une forme qu'on trouve partout dans la nature, dans la forme d'une galaxie, dans les plantes, jusqu'à la spirale de notre propre ADN. Dans les années 40, il y avait un chercheur autrichien qui a essayé de montrer que l'eau est vivante. Il a dit que le mouvement naturel de l'eau, c'est dans les spirales. Et j'ai trouvé intéressant d'entendre des surfeurs qui m'ont parlé de d'être énergisé dans ce mouvement de spirale. Spirals. I took them to the beach, these kind of guru guys who have never seen waves. And they sat on the beach and watched waves and watched surfers riding them. What captivated them was that water itself had energy, but the wave, the shape of the wave was going into a, a spiral. And then we all know that people that do surf, you see, you get some sort of electrical charge when you get inside the tube. If something happens to you, something transforms you. Well, what I believe after hearing these lectures and putting the, the things together, that if energy is traveling in circles and water, and that water that we're looking at in, in a wave, and then a wave is all that energy going over you into a spiral, that you get into an area where you're getting an electrical jolt of that wave going over you into a spiral. You're encapsulated with all that energy. And I think that's more than just being inside of a shape of water coming out and going, wow, that was fun. You come out kind of transformed. Les Hawaiians, ils ont un grand respect pour la mer. Ils pensaient même que c'est vivante. Et ils demandent même sa permission avant d'y rentrer. The Hawaiians always believe everything is an entity, you know. Um, the ocean is live, living and breathing. The land is living and breathing. You ask permission, you know, before you go into the forest, of uh, what you partake, you know, it's always been that respect and that understanding. On top of the water, in the water, under the water, but you know, just enjoy yourself. And when you finish, say thank you. I have a surf beat in my car. I always go out there and say thank you. When I jump in the ocean, I start thanking the ocean. When I come out of the ocean, I thank the ocean. Polynesian wayfarers were able to voyage across distances without GPS, without compasses, navigating only with your internal sense of consciousness. Just imagine how, with no sextant, no um, direction uh, compass, by reading the water, you know, reading the water as it hit the canoe, you know. I mean, it's, see, there, this exists. We have, we had, and we can develop disabilities. It's, it's all in our power, in our power. So, you know, to the problem that there's so much disturbance, there's so much distractions. It was a blind man who navigated, and he could just feel it in his na'au. All things come from the na'al. You could look at it as um, the way martial arts, Asian martial arts are done. You know, your chi is here. We can feel the rhythm, you know, of the earth, you know, whether it be land, 
or water, but more importantly, we can feel the rhythm of the ocean breathing. J'ai découvert aussi les wayfinders ou les wayfarers. C'est les navigateurs qui pouvaient naviguer sans baissole et même sans les étoiles. Ils ont une connexion ou ils avaient une connexion avec la mer qu'on ne peut pas expliquer. Polynesian wayfarers were able to voyage across distances without GPS, without compasses, navigating only with your internal sense of consciousness. Just imagine how, with no sextant, no um, direction uh, compass, by reading the water, you know, reading the water as it hit the canoe, you know. I mean, it's, see, there, this exists. We have, we had, and we can develop disabilities. It's all in our power, in our power. So, you know, to the problem that there's so much disturbance, there's so much distractions. It was a blind man who navigated, and he could just feel it in his na'al. All things come from the na'al. You could look at it as um, the way martial arts, Asian martial arts are done. You know, your chi is here. We can feel the rhythm, you know, of the earth, you know, whether it be land, or water, but more importantly, we can feel the rhythm of the ocean breathing. Est-ce que l'eau a une mémoire? Est-ce que l'océan est vivante? Peu importe. Si on le croit, on sera beaucoup plus respectueux vers lui. La deuxième chose que j'ai appris, c'était qu'il y a un point de repos, une stillness, ou le still point, dans la vague. Le titre du film vient d'un poème de T.S. Eliot, et ces mots me rappellent mes sensations sur les vagues. Tout est rien, le néant. C'est un état zen où le temps s'arrête. Il n'y a que la danse. See, the nothingness is the key, all right? Nothingness is actually everything, right? If you can go into the nothingness, that is where everything is at. And if you can use this particular wave to take you into the nothing, right? Or let you understand what the nothing is. People say, oh, where does universe come from? Came from nothing. Man, that's where you want to be. See, that's the thing about this particular wave that I like, right? You can go on this wave and enter into this wavelength, right? And all space and time stops because you become the moment. If you become in the moment and live within that moment, right? Guess what? You are in the nothing because nothing else matters. And the closer to nothing else matters, the closer you are to the nothing. And the nothing is where we want to be. Things happen so fast they slow down, especially in big waves. You know, when you're rushing into a giant barrel, it it feels like an eternity for like a few seconds. You remember everything in detail, put it that way. Everything around you is just absorbed, you know, in you. Because you're in that moment where you just not thinking of anything. You're in that nothingness. So you become everything. Everything becomes you. And you absorb everything right into you. And you remember all that. That's when time stops. That's when time, you know, it, it, it slows down because you thinking nothing and you absorbing everything. When we go in the ocean, it's, it's a game, it's an art, it's in pure enjoyment, it's everything and it's nothing at once. When I go out there, I'm living, you know, that's the whole thing. I'm living my life, I'm living my dream, I'm living everything and I'm living nothing. chose, c'est que toute chose est faite de vagues. Il y a des ondes partout dans le monde et les seules ondes qu'on peut voir, on peut toucher, c'est dans la mer. Les Hawaiians, ils ont un, un mot pour cette énergie qu'on qu peut sentir dans, dans, le, dans la mer. Cet mot, c'est le mana. 
Voici une explication de mana. Something out there that enters into your soul when you write a, when you're writing that, when you're out there playing on that. And if you want to call it mana, if you want to call it uh, life force, there's something that goes into you. When anything is in movement, there's a power behind it. And when that water is moving and it touches you, it's not only touching his body, but it's touching the inner you and it affects that. Once you experience this thing one time, once you've experienced one time, there will be nothing else out there on this planet Earth that will allow you to experience that again until you go back out there and do it again. The, the mana for the ocean for me doesn't mean that I have to jump in the ocean to have that mana. The ocean follow, you know, the mana of that ocean follows me wherever I go. The mana is the goodness, is the feeling, is, is what you get, you know? The mana is like the soul, it's how you feel, you know? You know, your love for something, your love for the ocean, that's the mana. Love for each other, you know? You, the, the, the feeling it gives you, that's the mana. Beaucoup de gens pensent qu'une vague, c'est de l'eau qui bouge au travers l'océan. Mais en fait, l'eau ne bouge pas tant que ça. Il va un peu en haut, un peu en bas. Ce qui bouge, c'est l'énergie. Quelqu'un qui surfe, il surfe l'énergie. Une vague a un début, un milieu et une fin. Mais comme toute énergie, il n'y a pas vraiment de fin. Il y a juste un changement de forme. C'est un peu comme nous. On a un début, un milieu et une fin. Et à notre fin, on ne sait pas encore où ça nous amène. Nous sommes aussi des vagues. A three-foot wave or two-foot wave is a very powerful energy. A wave was generated thousands of miles away. It's a lot of power. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to learn to flow with the power. You have to become water. Exactly. You can become the element, you know, the element itself. You know, in order to survive in the ocean, become the ocean. You just feel fluid and you just feel flowing and you just feel the energy and the power and you're flowing at moments and then you stopping at moments and you being just serene and then you being just, you know, chaotic and, and you know, that, that extra force comes through and, and, you, and you deal with that force right then and there and then it backs off and you back off also too. So you become a flow in, in everything, you know. I can direct myself what part of the island I want to go, when I want to go to, without using my own energy to be spiritually in touch with the ocean, you know, to move one with the ocean, to become the ocean itself. You know, we love surfing giant waves. Surfing is, is the easiest thing to do. Surviving is the hardest thing. Only recently did a young doctor tell me about the work of a swimming coach who found out his pupils had to become part of the water. And when they did, they, they seemed to violate all the rules that the coach was teaching. They just seemed to come up to something where the water became less dense and less resistive. J'ai commencé ce quête pour découvrir l'âme du surf. Pourquoi les surfeurs, euh, les gens sont si obsédés par les vagues. Et j'ai trouvé la réponse dans la mer, dans l'océan, dans l'eau. Le source de toute vie sur cette planète. Nous, en effet, principalement de l'eau, la planète aussi. Quelques surfeurs partagent la magie de l'océan, mais la plupart non. Comme la plupart d'entre nous, et j'espère que ça va changer parce que notre avenir dépend de lui.